Max Wardell, OverheadAthletics.com. We're going to go through a little cupping for the inside of the elbow today. All right, so cupping. We've done a video on this in the past. It's gotten a lot of viewership, so we wanted to come back to it and actually do something a little more sport specific today. So we get golfer's elbow, we get medial epicondylitis, these things on the inside of the elbow, UCL tears. Working with a bunch of baseball players here, we see all sorts of little flexor pronator strains coming through the inside of the elbow. And so what we're gonna do here is we've got him propped up, we've got a nice wedge under his arm so he's not in too much valgus. You gotta be careful when you have a medial elbow injury, specifically an injury to the medial epicondyle, to the UCL, that you're not cranking the arm back into valgus. We're limiting the tensile load on the inside of the elbow at the same time we can apply some, some manual interventions. I've got deep prep here, you can use whatever you want. We just kinda like to get the skin a little bit moisture, moisturized, a little bit tackier, I guess you would say, lubricated up just so we can get the nice suction effect with the cups that we need. And we'll, so we'll go through some stuff that, that we would do with somebody who's got some discomfort on the inside of the elbow. You gotta have them laying in a comfortable position. If it's their throwing side, their athletic side, they gotta be in a position where they're not impinging their shoulder and these sorts of things as well. We'll start with a cup that's maybe an inch and a half across. Um, you can see based on the size relative to his arm, you get a really big cup for a forearm that's thin like Austin's. No, I'm kidding. But uh, a thinner forearm, it's not going to work too well. And we'll look and see when does it get about halfway up into the cup. And then we'll kind of pop it off. This is sometimes uncomfortable especially someone who's had some discomfort in the forearm, you're just gonna let it move around. If you lose suction a little bit, that's okay. You just come back, a little more suction. And this is kind of a dynamic, a dynamic cupping that we do. So we'll go through another video on the effects of cupping and the positive effects. But really, with cupping therapy like this, the most important thing is getting the athlete in a comfortable position and applying the correct dosage. This cupping technique is one of the only techniques we have that can actually pull the subcutaneous tissue, pull some of the fascial tissue away from the muscle underneath. Now I'm gonna have Austin scoot back just a little bit if he's got some room there. We're gonna let him come out into extension, still supported here, and that way we can access a little bit more on the anterior aspect of the forearm. And we're just kind of moving it around not too quick, not too slow, but like we said, this is our one technique where we can pull it away or separate it and apply some tension away from the underlying tissues. So this is kind of our dynamic start. Really, we should be able to get this skin to kind of pull up nicely away from the, the muscle underneath. If any area seems to not glide as well, then we might hang out there for a little bit longer, hit that area a few more times. You'll see some redness, some petechiae, we like to call it, under the skin. That's all normal. Try to hit that lateral aspect of the medial forearm here, the lateral posterior aspect towards the ulna as it goes down to the wrist. And you can see we've got a little bit of redness here on the inside of the forearm that's completely normal. What we'll do is a little bit of static, a little bit of static cupping here. This is a great little fascial subcutaneous stretching technique. We've got a very small one inch cup here and we're gonna take this one on the medial epicondyle. Now you gotta be careful, someone has ulnar neuritis, this may not be the best uh, option for them. But sometimes we see that these tissues right on that medial epicondyle become rather tacked down and uncomfortable. And it doesn't have to go too far up into that cup, but we'll let them uh, hang out there. And from there, we'll just do start with some passive. So I'm just moving him. And this cup here is just wherever he's feeling tension down in the muscle. It could be there, it could be anywhere. And you can see, let's hold it up here just a little bit into the light. There we go. That the tissues inside the cup are moving a little bit as we do this and it's getting red he'll probably have a little bit of what looks to be bruising after this 
and we're just going back and forth. And then I'm going to let him do a little bit of active motion on his own. Active motion is really good. He's moving the muscle independent of the connective tissue that lies on top of it. So just a few techniques that we'll often use for the inside of the elbow here. With medial epicondylitis, with UCL strain sprains, like I said, be careful of the ulnar nerve. Someone's had Tommy John surgery, they've moved the nerve inside the elbow. You gotta be careful that you're not tractioning the nerve or pulling it in an aberrant direction. You can use cupping very safely with those patients, but you gotta use it in a way that is safe, first of all, and, and facilitates the movement of the nerve that we wanna facilitate, as opposed to a pathological um, pull of the nerve. So I just release, release, you can see he's a little bit raised up here. You could do a little soft tissue massage over that area, just get the blood moving around. And this will probably hang out like this. And I can always follow this with a little bit of my functional massage techniques where I'm actually massaging into the muscle, moving the muscle, and trying to improve gliding and sliding in between various, muscle type, various muscles as they tension and slacken. So there's cupping to the inside of the elbow. If you like this video, make sure to hit the thumbs up. If you wanna see future videos on cupping, just let us know in the comments section. We'll be happy to do that. It's something we use time to time here at the OAI. Make sure to subscribe so you don't miss our future stuff. We'll see you in the next one.